Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. What am I doing with this on the screen here? Hang on a second. Let me get that out of the way. All right, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> I've been weathering this thing, and so uh, in that process, I also decided to uh, kind of tackle the foam issue that I was having uh, with the tires. And so uh, I thought I'd take a minute to talk about that and originally what I had them set up for and what I was trying to do and why I'm going to change them. So uh, way back when... I had the current tires that are on this thing sitting on this thing. Uh, and I had them set up, you know, pretty much in full droop, uh, kind of like to be running anywhere from like 8 to 10 pounds of pressure. Uh, and I still have just one of these still set up like that on the left front here. And so, as you can see, uh, when that tire begins to compress, obviously it lets go, you know, of quite a bit of, of sidewall and everything, and the rim starts to sit considerably lower to the ground. Um, for a smaller, lighter truck such as this, that worked extremely well. It crawled like a champ, <clears throat> even side-hilled, and, you know, did gap stuff really, really well. Love these tires, too, by the way. Great, great, great one-inch set. And really perfect for this. Once I put them on, that's kind of why they're going to stay on this thing, I think, for a while. Anyway, so... Uh, once upon a time, I figured out uh, that this stuff, which is essentially equivalent to about 400 get, uh, grit, this is this is Scotch Brite, but it's like finishing Scotch Scotch Brite, so it's kind of like modeler stuff. I'm sure you've seen it all. All have, all have seen it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I cut this stuff once upon a time. I used to try and cut this into strips and use it uh, for wheels that I had done, like say uh, some modding to like the hubs, like put copper wire on or whatever, and didn't want to run full foams but didn't want to have like zero foam in there at all relying just on air pressure. And so um, I've used this stuff in the past to kind of create like uh, dual stage uh, because it's incredibly soft. It has like zero resistance to it whatsoever, but it does get to a point um, where it starts to slow things down before it fully compresses. And so sometimes, say if you do it, uh, you know, in like I said, dual stage fashion, you can see how it compresses before the foam actually compresses, and then once it reaches that level of the foam, uh, everything kind of compresses together. So I'm not going to glue anything together, but I do want to show you how I've set up the other three, and I'll just take care of doing this one on camera here for you. Um, then the whole thing's pretty easy to do too. All you need to do is just cut yourself a strip of this Scotch Brite material. Grab the appropriate set of scissors. And it only needs to be about a centimeter wide, half inch, just shy of. You don't want it to be too wide because you don't want to push the sidewall out. Um, this is really just to kind of just make sure that the, the overall height of the tire kind of stays intact, especially with a vehicle that weighs like three ounces shy of two pounds. Um, so let me pull the wheel. That'd be a rough repair without a jack in. Okay, let me buzz these out of here real fast, and then uh, I'll show you what's going on. I have also uh, lead taped these two, so there's like a piece of copper, a couple wraps of copper here, and then lead tape around them. So yeah, I am touching lead, and I will be sure to wash my hands when I'm done working with these wheels. I was thinking about adding even more, especially the ones up front. Look at the weathering. Not bad. I think it's turned out okay. This is my first time ever really tackling a weathering job, and I think it done. I think I've done okay. It's not perfect. A couple things I probably would have done differently, but I started doing just simple like brush-on technique by hand, blending color and stuff like that, trying to go for a certain look. And then once the airbrush showed up yesterday, then I started doing more airbrushing technique to kind of get that that wind blown and definitely like it sat in the dust looking like it's been out in the desert for at least maybe, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. I'm driving around, checking stuff out, camping in the wilderness. Anyway, okay, so as you can see, this isn't going to completely reach the full circumference of the tire, so I have a couple other pieces here that I can cut little pieces to sort of fill in. And it's not going to matter because once the foam is inside, it keeps everything in place. You don't have to worry about anything shifting around. And I've done this mod quite a bit to other tires in the past. And when I say that it doesn't move around, it definitely does not move around. These two materials sitting next to each other, they're definitely, they stay put. So 
Um, once everything's in there and you push it around to the outside of the tire, you can see, sort of, my finger wasn't in the way, where it's gapped, basically where that gap is at. And you can kind of gauge how much you're going to need to sort of fill that in. This might do, but that's almost a little on the small side. I want a little bit more. So, say, and it doesn't need to be, need to be that long. Just a bit more. And even a, a little bit of overlap on either side or both sides, once it's laying in there, doesn't matter either, just as long as it's there. Because if it's not there, what happens is it creates a soft spot, a flat soft spot in the tire. And as long as this is there, it won't do that. So you find that spot and you just simply just lay and press it right, right into where it needs to be. And it won't move. It's there to stay. So then what I like to do with my foams, probably a lot of you guys like to do this too, is basically just like take them and fold them in half and just kind of make a little bit of like a U-shape, C-shape thing out of them here. And then right where that spot is at, I'm going to turn and put like the back side of this right in there. So I'm going to lift the sidewall up and I'm just going to slip that in and, and just press that one piece like right against the back side of the tire. And then I'm going to work the sidewall all the way around. And once the foam is like all the way inside, I will take my fingers and just kind of open up the foam and begin to press that into the tire as well, keeping everything in place, all right? So you kind of want to be pretty gentle, but obviously, you know, move quick enough to get the job done. I want to be here all day. And you can feel where that, that spot is at, you know, just make sure that everything is seating you know, right where it wants to be, that you don't have any excess folds or anything like that in the tire, and then it's not horribly deformed or anything. If you made it too big, it will make a big lump. If you made it too small, it will essentially not be effective at all. You want to have a little bit of support to sort of lay over where it's at, but you don't want it to be too much to where it's going to, again, deform the tire. So once that's all set, let's get the, the center ring back in. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's like a gnat flying around in here. I'm afraid of them flying into my mouth. All right. These are just such a good looking tire. I really like these a lot. These RCs from four-wheel drive super swappers are just good looking tire. Lots of tread. Very aggressive. Looks perfect for this build. Can't get over how good this looks actually. When I, when I got this body and kind of was trying to think about what what wheels and tires were going to work. I knew immediately that I wanted to try this set on there, but I didn't know how I was going to make it happen because of the, the 9mm hex versus the 7mm thing. Uh, but if you've been following along up to this point, you know that I put a little bit of time in and figured out that the uh, 7mm hex would go on, and I was able to get these wheels and tires mounted. And I couldn't be happier with how it looks, especially now that I'm able to weather it. So let me get these all buzzed back in. A lot of these sidewalls actually do stick. So much better. All right, hex is already on there. There's that lay nut. Nice and snug, not over tight. Release the jack stand. There we have it. Tires are modded. Now, um, I think if you can recall from what that was doing before, that was like fully collapsing to where the rim was completely in contact with the ground. Um, that's just so much better than what it was before. And that also, too, uh, despite not having switched out the foams, I know it's can't virtually can't be seen on camera, but it kind of pushes the sidewall out a little bit. And also kind of just sort of makes them maybe about, I don't know, one to two millimeters taller overall. So it is like one of those things that will kind of affect the overall appearance of the truck, which is, again, was one of those things I was going for because I kind of thought it had a little bit, of, a little bit too much sag in the back end that I was having problems. Not necessarily trying to get out, but just like overall, it didn't look right with the tires sitting too, too low like they were. So I'm looking forward to running it now and seeing how this goes. 
another thing I did, I don't think I've mentioned yet, but I took some copper wire, wherever that stuff might be. It's 20 gauge. 20, here it is. 20 gauge copper wire. I'm not even sure where this came from, but I know you can find it just about anywhere online these days. Uh, and just made some D-rings. I have not weathered them yet, but I did color them black. And so I plan on weathering those. Because uh, these two little holes on here, and there were nothing to fill them with. I did think about trying to install the shackles from 24 scale, but these are just a little on the small side, and I didn't want to have to modify like the mounts in order to be able to get them on, and you'd have to narrow them up quite a bit for that to fit. Plus, they were just too small, I think, anyway. Um, so I decided to make my own. I may change my mind. I'll see if there's anything else out there that I can get, and what else? By the way, uh, I was going to do a big air, you know, unboxing of this airbrush and stuff like that and like be like, oh, check this out, blah, 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 rubber feet and cool toy, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's already a bunch of videos out there that are very well done and you should watch them. Um, I did. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I bought this. Um, and so it was cheap, basically on sale with 10% off. So uh, delivered like to the door, like 62 and change or something like that. Not a bad price to pay, um, and especially since it kind of opens up the doors of being able to do considerably different weathering and stuff like that than what I'd really ever been able to do before. So looking forward to being able to work with that some more and get better at doing it. Uh, like I said, this thing isn't perfect, uh, but it's, I think, for my first attempt at it, I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, what else can I ramble on about? Uh, I do have a set of Charisma shocks that, uh, based from one, just looks from what I'm seeing underneath here, I think there's a chance the Charisma oil-filled shocks that a lot of people like to use uh, just might fit on this thing pretty well. And I was going to give that a shot a little bit later, and if that happens to work out, there's going to be a video. Hope you picked up a couple things. Maybe, maybe not. Um, regardless, please hit that like and subscribe. Um, almost at 1400, so I think at the time that you guys should be watching this video, Perhaps we will have crested that threshold, which is awesome. Thank each and every one of you guys for being here and for your ongoing support. It is huge. It's really cool. Uh, obviously, the channel could be that much bigger. There are people that started their channel about the same time I did. They have enjoyed, you know, I think everybody who started channels all at about the same time. We have all kind of enjoyed varying degrees of success with our channels. And I think uh, the bottom line is that we are all thankful that you were here, regardless of how great or small those numbers are. So once again, thanks, as I guess is all I'm trying to say. So we'll see you on the next one. Hope you're digging the Land Rover content, because I'm definitely liking this thing. Um, it's one of my new favorite rigs to, to kind of tinker around with. So... Stay tuned for some more. We'll see you later. Bye.